If you've ever happened upon a scene like this during the ice fishing season, you may wonder what in the world is going on and why all the fish are dying. In this video, I'm going to discuss this phenomenon known as winter kill. And at the end of the video, I'll show you which fish are more susceptible to this phenomenon. Winter kill is the death of a large amount of fish at one time due to a condition known as hypoxia. Hypoxia is simply defined as a very low level of oxygen. But what is it about winter that makes this condition much more likely to happen? There are two primary ways and one secondary way in which oxygen enters the water. One primary way in which this happens is through the exchange of oxygen for carbon dioxide in the water column by plants in a process known as photosynthesis. Sunlight that reaches the plant's leaves triggers this chemical exchange process. In photosynthesis, water and carbon dioxide react in the presence of light to create a form of sugar known as glucose, which acts as food for the plant along with the byproduct of oxygen. This means that where there are plants in the water column, there tends to be higher concentrations of oxygen. The second primary way that oxygen enters the water is through the dissolving of oxygen from the atmosphere into the water through a process known as diffusion. Diffusion is the tendency of matter to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration over time. This results in a net push of oxygen into the water column. The rate at which this happens increases significantly through the disturbance of the surface water through things like wave action. The secondary way in which oxygen enters the water column is through the entrance of oxygenated waters from other sources, such as rivers, streams, and even some underwater springs. The primary way in which oxygen leaves the water is through the respiration of animals, such as fish, in the water. Now let's take a look at what happens to these oxygen levels during the winter months. Before we go on, please remember to hit that like button, ring that bell to be notified of our future videos, and consider subscribing to our channel. These three things really help support the channel. Thanks. As water surface temperatures drop below freezing, ice begins to form. The ice effectively forms a seal between the oxygen-rich atmosphere and the water below, thereby stopping the diffusion of oxygen from the air into the water. Now you may be thinking that this ice also blocks plants from producing oxygen under the water surface, but this isn't necessarily true. And here's why. When the formed ice is very clear, most of the sunlight is getting through and reaching the plants below. The degree to which this happens is directly related to how much sunlight enters the water column. However, if the formed ice is not clear and has a lot of air bubbles in it, more light is reflected from the surface and less light gets to the plants below. Snowfall accumulating on top of already frozen ice makes matters even worse for the plants. The more snow that falls, the less and less light enters the water column, reducing the amount of photosynthesis and thus the total amount of oxygen being produced in the water. So the amount of oxygen in the water at any time is a result of the balance between the production of oxygen by diffusion from the atmosphere as well as plant production and the removal of oxygen in the water from fish. As ice and snow builds and blocks the production of oxygen from the plants as well as from the air, oxygen levels in the water begin to drop. When this happens, the fish will move to any areas of the water that still hold sustainable levels of oxygen. As the fish deplete the remaining oxygen in this portion of the water column, the fish will eventually die, resulting in the effect we call winter kill. There are two characteristics of lakes that largely determine whether or not the lake will be subject to winter kill. These characteristics are lake depth and water flow. 
shallow lakes are more susceptible to winter kill because once the ice forms, there is simply not enough water left for the fish to reside in. Because of this, the remaining oxygen in the water will be used up much quicker than it would be in a lake of greater depth. Lakes with high volumes of water flow, such as impoundments, are much less susceptible to winter kill due to the volume of freshly oxygenated water entering the lake body. So a lake that is shallow with little to no incoming water flow are the most susceptible to winter kill. One of the signs that hypoxia is starting to take place is when fish begin to congregate near open holes in the ice. Eventually, if conditions persist long enough, the fish will start to die in mass numbers. Before I wrap this up, it's important to note that not all fish species are as sensitive to low oxygen as others are. This chart gives a relative indication of the sensitivity of various freshwater species to low oxygen concentrations. You'll note that trout are at the high end of this range, making them very susceptible to winter kill conditions as opposed to the bullhead, which are at the low end of the range. So a secondary sign of winter kill is when you start catching fish that are shown at the lower end of this chart and not nearly as many fish at the upper end. This is an indication that the population balance in the lake has shifted due to winter kill. Well, that's about gonna wrap it up for this week. Hope this video was helpful in, in giving you some information about what's going on in these late winter conditions on some of these shallower lakes and ponds. And we'll see you again next time.